Hello and welcome to the Monday edition of Discovering the Jewish Jesus. I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and today we're talking about asking God for the right things. The word prayer probably evokes a mental image of our heads bowed and our hands folded together. But did you know that prayer is so much more than just a religious exercise? It's a supernatural activity that we enter into with our supernatural Father and Creator. And during the next 30 minutes, Rabbi Schneider from sunny Florida is going to be sharing what to truly pray for. Our series is titled Keys to Answered Prayer, and we'll be learning how to connect with the Lord in an authentic way, according to His will and not our own. When we speak about keys to answered prayer, it's so important as we connect with God, if we're gonna move God's heart, if we're gonna see His glory manifest in our life, that we need to be authentic. As we're speaking to the Lord, it can't just be something that we're doing out of a sense of obligation. To truly connect with the Lord, we had to be speaking to him, beloved children of God, from our heart. Our prayer connection has to be real. And only God knows and you know if it's real. I mean, let's face it. How many of us have prayed before, even if we're just praying before a meal, and although we're saying religious words, And although we're saying that we're praying to God in reality, our hearts are not connected. Remember, Jesus accused the Pharisees of this. He said, their hearts are far from me. They do all these things, these religious deeds, but the reality is their hearts are not really connected to me. Today, as I speak about keys to answer prayer, I want to focus on the key of asking God for the right things. If you're going to see God move in your life, if you're going to witness him answering your prayer, you have to be asking him, beloved one, for the right things. John wrote in one of his letters, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know that our requests have been granted. Listen again. We have two different categories we could put this concept in. We have the category of asking the Lord for things that are not his will. And if we're asking the Lord for things that are not his will, we have no confidence that he's gonna answer those things, no matter how much fleshly faith we think we have. But if we pray things, the Bible tells us, that are according to his will, in other words, the thing that's in our heart that we're asking him for is the same thing that Father wants for us in Jesus. When we're connecting with the Lord in that way, we can know that our prayers are gonna move mountains. Now, some of you might feel, oh my gosh, well, you know what? All the things that God wants for me are not really the things that, you know, get me excited. I mean, that's kind of like similarly, some people think that going to heaven's gonna be boring. So some people like they're not attracted to heaven because they have such a wrong concept of what it is. Well, the same thing is true for some people when they think about, I should be praying those things that God wants for me, that I wanna pray the things that are according to his will. Some people think that, well, if I pray for the things that are according to his will, I'm not really that excited about that because the things that I want, I want a new Corvette, I want a new house, I wanna marry a beautiful a soulmate. I mean, things that God you know, blesses us with sometimes when we seek his kingdom first, but those are not the primary things that are in the heart of God for you and I. So what I wanna do is I wanna get you excited about what God wants for you and what is his will for your life. Because if you ask him, beloved ones, for what he wants for you, he's gonna answer those prayers when you're truly asking him for those things from your heart of hearts, from deep inside. So we're gonna go now to the book of Ephesians, chapter three, and we're gonna find out what is it that the Lord wants for us. Knowing that if we ask anything according to his will, he's gonna answer, we're going now to the book of Ephesians, chapter three, to find out what is it 
that is God's will for my life. And I think what you're gonna do is you're gonna get excited about what his will is for you. And you'll begin to pray for these things often. And as a result, you're gonna see increase in your life. So Ephesians chapter three, beginning there in verse number 14. For this reason, Paul said, I bow my knees before the Father. So this is Paul speaking to us about his posture of prayer. He's bowing his knees before the Father. Now, we know that a lot of people, when they pray, they literally get on their knees. And that's fine, that's great, but you can have a posture of being on your knees before the Lord without actually physically being on your knees. So when Paul says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, I'm not sure if he's necessarily saying that he's physically on his knees, although he very well could have been. I think it was a posture of his heart. I remember as a young believer, I'd be laying on my bed, I'm going back over 40 years ago now, and I constantly I'd be being hit, beloved ones, with things that I should pray for, just like inspirations, like, oh, I've got to ask God for this. I've got to talk with God about this. A lot of them were from the Holy Spirit. And whenever these inspirations hit me as I was lying in my bed, I felt like I needed to get out of my bed and go to the foot of my bed and get on my knees. And I would do that thousands of times for years. And it was good, it was okay. But eventually the Holy Spirit began to show me, you don't have to get out of your bed and go to the foot of your bed and get on your knees. Trust that when you have that feeling that you want to do that, that you're already doing it because it's in your heart. Are you getting what I'm saying? When Paul says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, it's first of all, it's a posture of heart. And God wants you and I to know that we don't have to do something on the outside in the physical world to get him to hear us. When it's in our heart, we're already connected. This is important because God wants you and I to be confident that he's connected to our hearts. And if you feel inspired to ask the Lord for something, the very inspiration that you have, that is where the connection is. You don't have to do something else a lot of times. You just be confident that the Lord hears that inspiration that's internal in you and just be confident that he hears that and that it's already answered. Because remember, if you're asking him for anything according to his will, John told us in his letter, know that you already have that request. This is important. It's important that we become so centered in the Holy Spirit that we know that nothing is oftentimes required on the outside, it's already happened within. And this actually gets to the next portion of Paul's prayer. So first of all, he's in this posture of prayer, this posture of humility. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father. He's in this posture of humility. He's in this posture of dependency. He's in this posture of knowing how great God is how good God is, and how God is a God that answers in his loving kindness. And then what is he asking for? Verse number 16, here's what he's asking for. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. What is God's glory? God's glory is his manifest presence. So when you study the word glory in the Bible, what you'll see is it's most often associated, beloved church, with when God shows up so that people can experience him in their physical existence. So in other words, the glory of God filled the temple. What happened? When the temple was dedicated to the Lord, the glory of God filled it. And how did the glory of God fill it? It was filled with smoke. So there was a physical manifestation of God's supernatural presence. So most often when glory is associated in the Bible, when the word glory is used in the Bible, it's associated with God's manifest, physical, supernatural activity in the earth. So Paul is praying that the invisible God would manifest himself supernaturally in a way that you could, listen, experience. So listen again. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power. P-O-W-E-R, with power, that God's glory 
his invisible power would strengthen you so that you'd experience it. Paul said, through his spirit in the inner man so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus and Rabbi will be right back. But first, a special announcement. Experience the majesty of Jerusalem. Join us for a remarkable event that will unite believers from around the world. I invite you to join me on our journey of faith as we celebrate together the Feast of Tabernacles. Don't miss the extraordinary event from Jerusalem, Israel. Join me live from the Daystar Studios in Jerusalem, Monday, October 2nd, noon, again at 9 p.m. and then 1 a.m. the following morning, only on Daystar. We are so thankful for everyone who gives a financial gift of support to this ministry. And perhaps today is the day that you decide that you would like to deepen your commitment to discovering the Jewish Jesus. The best way to do that is to sign up to become a monthly partner at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. Or you can call us at 800-777-7835. Together, we can help others prepare for Jesus' return. And now let's get back into the second half of today's message. What I previously said is that God wants us to know that He hears the slightest whisper, the slightest inclination. He responds to our desires. And so Paul just said here, I pray that God would strengthen you by His glory with power in your inner man, inside now, because remember I just got done saying that God wants you to know He's connected to your inside, right? You don't want to have to get out of your bed all the time and go to the foot of your bed and get on your knees because God wants you to know that he's connected to your inner man. There's nothing outward oftentimes that's required. What God is looking for is for you to simply believe that he heard you and he already answered. That's where real intimacy comes from. When you get to the place where you think you don't have to do something on the outside to connect with God, but rather instead you know he already hears the slightest movement of your soul, that the Ruach HaKadosh, the breath of God, the Holy Spirit is in you. So there's nothing outside required. It's an internal walk. So Paul is saying, I'm praying that the glory of God would strengthen you, where? On the inside in your inner man, so that Christ would dwell in your heart by faith that you would know, beloved one, that he's in your inner man. And that's where the intimacy comes from. That's where that sense of being in true fellowship with God comes from. You see, when I felt like I always had to do something for God to hear me, like I'd have the inspiration inside and I thought, oh, I feel this thing. I gotta go over to that corner of the room and get on my knees and pray. What I noticed, beloved one, was I felt the inspiration and I felt connected to God when I felt inspired, but I started realizing, beloved ones, that as soon as I got out of my bed to go to the foot of my bed or to go over to that corner of the bedroom and get on my knees, I noticed that when I got to the foot of my bed or got over to the corner and got on my knees, I no longer sensed the connection anymore. I sensed the connection when I was experiencing that inclination on my inside to connect with God. But then when I did something outside of myself, got out of my bed, went to the corner and got on my knees, it was like the connection was lost. It was like I lost something. I was trying to get more connected when I got out of my bed, thinking it would help me, thinking God would answer me if I did that. But when I got to the foot of my bed and got on my knees, it's like I didn't feel that same connection anymore. Why? Because I went from trying to connect with God from my inside And now I had moved to do something on the outside physically and I lost the connection. And so Paul is saying, I'm asking the Lord to strengthen you by his power through his glory that you would know that he dwells inside you and coming into that revelation and that realization, you'd enter in to deep communion and deep security in God. 
So let's listen again to the scripture itself. Ephesians chapter three, verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, that posture of humility, dependency, knowing the great loving kindness of God, knowing that he was a sinner that had redeemed by grace. And then he says that he would grant you in verse number 16, that he would grant you, that he'd release to you, that he'd bless you according to the riches of his glory. What's God's glory? When he manifests his goodness on the earth, and in this specific instance, to you. Remember Moses prayed to the Lord in Exodus, show me your glory. And the Lord responded back to Moses, go hide yourself in the cleft of the rock and I'll make all my goodness pass before you. So God's glory is his manifest goodness. So here we go. Paul's saying here, I'm praying to the Father that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, according to his goodness, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. You don't go outside somewhere. The Holy Spirit's in you now. Christ in you, Paul said, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory, so that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. So Paul, once again, is wanting to draw us to the inside, and he's saying that God would strengthen you with glory and power so that you would experience, listen, Christ dwelling in you by faith. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is not here or there. For behold, he said in the King James Version, the kingdom of heaven is within you. This is the mystery of the gospel. This is the mystery of having fellowship with God. This is, this is deep calling to deep right now, beloved children of God. And to enter fully into this reality of which I speak, there is a dying to the flesh that's required. There's a holy and a godly discipline that's required to get to this place where you become aware of what's going on inside you. Because we are born into this world physically connected to the earth, to the outer world. Jesus said that which is born of flesh is flesh, that which is born of spirit is spirit. Behold, I say, you must be born again. When you see, when you're born into the world through your mother's womb, you're born flesh. And the flesh is flesh. It's connected to all the things of the world. It's connected to what we see. It's connected to the food we depend on. It's connected to the air we breathe. It's connected to our physical and sexual passions. It's connected to the flesh. So in order to get connected to the spirit, that indwells us, we have to separate ourselves from the flesh to get in touch with the spirit that's within. And this takes a godly discipline. This is why Paul said, bodily discipline is profitable, but spiritual discipline is even more profitable because it gives results not only in this life, but brings you benefit even in the age to come. So today, what we've learned is the importance of learning how to connect with God through prayer on the inside. It's a key, beloved, to answer prayer. And it's the pathway to discovery of how close to you God is. And when you discover God inside you and begin to fellowship with him in that place, beloved one, you will be set free. You're listening to Discovering the Jewish Jesus. Our Bible teacher is Rabbi Schneider, and we've been learning about the keys to answered prayer. If you'd like to learn more about this ministry, or if you'd like to hear today's message titled, What to Truly Pray For Again, please visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And you know, Rabbi shared with us today the pathway to discovering freedom and shalom, and why it's 
so important that we honor God with our prayers, and it's also important we honor God with our gifts. And to expound upon that a little bit more, here's Rabbi Schneider once again with a biblical principle from the book of Matthew. There's a portion in God's Word that I've really been putting myself under, asking the Lord to shepherd me into perfect obedience. It's the story of the rich young ruler that came to Jesus in Matthew 19. It's also repeated in Mark and Luke. And the rich young ruler says to Jesus, good teacher. Jesus says, why do you call me good? Only God's good. And then the rich young ruler said to Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Yeshua said, keep all the commandments. The rich young ruler said, I've done all the commandments from my youth. He was a moral man. Then Yeshua said to him, now go and sell everything you have and you will inherit the kingdom of God. And the Bible says the rich young ruler went away sad because he wasn't able to surrender his possessions to the Lord. And the disciples were really like, wow, who can inherit the kingdom of God? Jesus said, what's impossible with man is possible with God. Beloved, we don't have to earn our salvation, but Jesus is calling for us to surrender. Will you surrender your finances to him? To give a financial gift today, simply go online to discoveringthejewishjesus.com or call us at 800-777-7835. You can also give a gift of any amount through the Rabbi Schneider app. Just click on the donate button in the middle of the home screen and then follow the simple instructions. We are so grateful for every single gift that we receive. And as our way of saying thank you for your financial gift, we'll send you Rabbi Schneider's message of the month that's available as an immediate download. And then we'll make sure that our current newsletter, which is filled with updates, special holiday announcements and offers is sent directly to your home. And speaking of special holiday announcements, Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles is coming up this Friday, September the 29th at sunset, and it will last until October the 6th at nightfall. And you know, Sukkot is one of the three pilgrimage feasts that God commands his children to keep. And it's one of the most fun holidays that we can celebrate, especially if you have kids in your family. And during the Feast of Tabernacles, we build temporary huts or booths in our yards to remind us of God's faithfulness and to help us keep our eyes focused on the coming marriage feast of the Lamb. If you'd like to discover what a sukkah or temporary booth could look like at your home, or if you'd like to know more about these unique and special fall holy days, we'd love for you to visit us online at discoveringthejewishjesus.com. And then don't forget that on Monday, October the 2nd, Rabbi is presenting a live event from Jerusalem as he prepares to embrace the spirit of tabernacles. To learn more, visit us online. But right now, let's wrap up today's program titled What to Truly Pray For with a special blessing from Rabbi Schneider. Blessings trump curses. And in the book of Numbers chapter six, we find the ironic blessing that God commanded Moses' brother Aaron, the high priest, to speak over the children of Israel. There's power in blessing, beloved ones. So take part in receiving Father's blessing upon your life today. Yavah Yahweh Yair Yahweh Panavelecha Vihunecha Isa Yahweh Panavelecha Veasem Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift you up with his countenance and the Lord give you, beloved one, his peace. God bless you and shalom. 
I'm your host, Dustin Roberts, and Discovering the Jewish Jesus is a production of Shalom Ministries. Be sure to join us again next time when Rabbi Schneider reveals the keys to answered prayer. That's Tuesday on Discovering the Jewish Jesus.